Welcome to the channel. I'm Tony the Technician. Today we're going to be going back into my 23 Colorado and fixing a mistake I made. You guys might have made the same mistake because this was probably one of the top recommended bulbs for the 23 Colorado when they first came out. I have had mine installed for roughly five or six months, that being the Oxalom LEDs. We're going to be swapping those out because a lot of people are running into failures. I've had mine roughly six months now. I started to see failure about a month ago and I want to get them switched out before they completely fail. It's just my low beams right now, but I'm going to do both low and high beams just to make sure I don't have issues in the future. When I got the Oxalon bulbs, I inspected them. They seemed to be good quality, no issues with that. Nice small housings, the back housing on it, the beam pattern was very, very, very similar, if not the same, to the original halogen bulb beam pattern. Yes, when you install an LED into a halogen housing, it's frowned upon by many others. As long as you properly aim the headlights, which you need to do, because when installing an LED, they naturally aim higher and they're brighter, so you need to adjust them down, especially if you do a lift kit on the truck as well. Now, I started getting flickering in the driver's side low beam and then it moved to the passenger side as well. Now the driver's side is completely blinking a lot and it is like 30% the brightness that it was when it was originally installed. This is 10 to 20 people just in the last couple weeks have been mentioning the same issues with the flickering. Anywhere from having these bulbs for one to two months up to about six months. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that are uh, still having positive results with these bulbs, but there are not just a couple people having issues with these Quite a few people are having issues with these now I personally in the past with all of my vehicles in the last I don't know 10 years I have used either diode dynamics or last fit I buy diode dynamics for more off-road lighting and last bit lights for any interior exterior lighting that's factory to the vehicle well, when I first got this truck, I knew that the housing was tight, the area was tight, and I was afraid with the last fit bulbs that they were going to have too big of a back housing to fit in the actual headlight assembly. So I went with the one that I saw a couple other people running when I first got my Colorado, that being the Oxalons, because they have a nice small back housing. And I think this issue, it could be due to poor chip quality, or it could be the number one factor uh, for LEDs dying is overheating uh, if they're not properly cooled. So if the cooling assembly on this headlight isn't sufficient enough, that could be causing this issue. So I know last fit, I've used it on my 85 Camaro, I've used it on my 300ZX, I've used it on my Malibu, I've used it on my Telluride, I've used it on this truck. All of the lights on this truck are last fit except for the headlights, high beam and low beam. So we're gonna be swapping out to the last fit LED headlights, high beam and low beam. I'll bring you in so you guys can see the information on these as well as a close up look of the bulbs. And then I'll show you the Oxaloms once we get those pulled out. But last fit makes it super easy. You put in your year make and model, your trim level, whatnot. With the Colorado now, you can select individual bulbs. It'll tell you everything they have available or you can select packages, whether you want high beam, low beam package, just low beams, low beam, high beam, blinker package, low beam, high beam, blinker, license plate lights, reverse lights, interior lights, all as a bundle. Like they have a lot of different bundles available. So last fit's always been good to me. I've never had an issue with any of their bulbs. And uh, so that's why I'm switching to them now that I know that these should fit in the headlight assembly. I should have went with these to begin with because I've always went with them. So made the mistake, won't be doing that again. So if you guys have the ox lungs, Hopefully you're not having issues, but be prepared to because a lot of people are, uh, but I hope you're the best with those. If you end up having issues, I think these are a good option, so I'll have this link down in the description for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below of your guys' thoughts, and as always, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Let's get into this. This one is going to be the low beam, and this one is going to be the high beam, and for the low beam, you can see the specs on that with a one year warranty and this is going to include both of them. It's the H8, 9 or 11. And then before I open it up, I'll just quickly show you the high beam. Same color temperature, same warranty, all of that, just a little bit different design. 
So first we'll look at the H11. And then this one is the 9005 LA Plus. This is the LC Plus. Each one's going to come with a little booklet. Each one's going to come with a few different last fit decals. There you can see the two different bulbs. With this, you are going to have a small wiring harness coming off the back where you will clip into. There you can see the cooling fan, which I like more on these. Now, when you're installing these, you want to make sure that you don't push too hard on the actual fan portion. Make sure you're kind of pushing on the housing instead so you don't damage the fan. As you can see, really nice quality, really nice build, nice seal. And then over here, a little bit different design here, as you can see, as far as how the chip layout, chip layout is. And then I'll make sure to pull out one of the bulbs and set it next to these so you guys can see. See, once again, cooling fan. This one's got a, a backing on it so you can kind of press on this one without having to worry. It has an O-ring style seal there, as you can see. It's, it's clear or white. And then same wired plug. So let's go ahead and get the Oxaloms out and get these last fit bulbs installed. So I'm not sure how well it's picking it up. I'm on my way to work, but it's not flickering right now, but you can see it's much it's much more dim than the other side. Now, there's no sense in just replacing the one because uh, this has happened to a few people now, so you might as well just replace them because I would hate to just replace one side and then that side start acting up. And then I'm also gonna replace the price because it's the same bulb or the same brand and everything. And I'd rather that not go out on me either. As soon as I catch it flickering, I will report it for you guys. There you can see quite easily. There you're getting a little bit of flicker. You'll actually see this left beam blinking. You can see just how dim it is, or how small the beam pattern is compared to the other side. So when I catch it really flickering, I'll, I'll show you guys. It's not terrible right now but it flickers a lot and as you can tell that left beam is extremely small compared to the right just to kind of show you where to access everything the front blinkers are going to be very easy to access right here the high beams are pretty easy to access right here the low beams though are actually enclosed back here so the easiest way to access is to remove these T15 Torx fasteners along your fender liner and peel that back. That's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. And then I did want to show you guys how to adjust your headlights once you've made this change, especially if you have a lift on your truck. So if you look in the corners, you got this bracket that comes up right below that is this hole. Below that, you can see this cup right here inside that cup. There is an Allen, it's kind of got some water in it, but it is an Allen. And you just take an Allen fastener, that obviously fits it, and you turn that. I can't remember counterclockwise, clockwise, which direction it goes. Obviously, you have your lights on, put it in, adjust it, you'll see the headlight move up and down. Uh, what I did was I adjusted mine, drove around, and then I actually pulled both my wife's SUV and mine at the end of the driveway, shot our headlights onto the garage door and made sure that they were roughly the same height and then I drove around to make sure that the lights weren't shining in anybody's eyes or through their windshields and here's the one on the other side so that's how you access them I'm gonna go ahead and remove the t15 fasteners on both sides and then we'll gain access and swap out the lights I do want to mention so I went three up and three over removing all of those and then down below on each side you're also going to have a couple of clips or a T15 fastener on one side I have a T15 there you can see one of them not the T15 but the clip behind it and then another one right here 
and then you just simply remove those and then you can peel this liner back. So once you have the liner pulled back, if you look up, you can see that big plate or cup, whatever you want to call it. This guy right here, you're going to turn that counterclockwise. And for some, it may be tougher than others. Once you turn it left, you kind of got to, it's like a, might turn like a, an inch and then you simply peel it back off. It does have that rubber O-ring, so make sure that's on there to help seal it. And now we can see the back of the headlight. So here's the low beam and the high beam. Just quickly looking at them, you can see it is going to stick a little bit further back. We're gonna see if that housing will actually close with this headlight in there. Uh, even though it is still sealed due to the seal, uh, I want to see if I can actually get the cap back on the headlight assembly. And then the high beam. So you can see a little bit design difference there. Uh, these should definitely be quite a bit better at cooling. You can see just how small the fans are on the Oxalom compared to the fans on the last fit. So the last fit should definitely cool quite a bit better. And then you got these pigtails so you can kind of move the wiring around where you need. But the nice thing about the Colorado is they do give you plenty of wiring. So when you're taking out the low beam from the wheel well, uh, there is enough wire to actually pull the headlight down to the wheel well. So that is nice. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get these installed and then I'll work on the other side. One thing you do want to do before putting them back in the assembly is plug them in and turn them on to make sure because the plug can be connected both directions and you don't want to get it all put back together and then find out that you got to swap you just have to flip the the plug basically uh, but I just checked mine and both of them come on so I'm gonna go ahead and get them reinstalled okay so we have both in and I'm gonna show you a trick with the last fits here in just one second but everything even with the pigtail does fit inside the housing so I'm gonna go ahead and put my cap back on and when installing the headlight it's easier to put it up in there and then come around and look at the front of the headlight while your there's the cap is back on while you're installing it you kind of have your hand up in there and you're leaning around the front looking at the, the tabs to line them up it makes it a lot easier and then I'll show you the second trick here in just a sec. With the last fit bulbs, these are the Oxaloms. The tabs are built into the back side of the headlight assembly. Where you can see on the last fits, it's this ring. And when you go to put the light in and turn it, the actual headlight or bulb assembly will turn and this ring will not. That is because this ring is just press fit on here. There you can see it is double o-ringed so there's no moisture or anything getting past that so your best bet is to take this ring and actually put it in the headlight assembly and then mount this and then all you have to do is press the headlight assembly into the ring it seals it it's not going anywhere i've never had an issue with it and there you go the other good thing about this is when you get it in there you can adjust the direction of the headlight so before you do this make sure you take a picture of your factory headlights shining on a wall or the garage door or whatnot see your beam pattern see what it looks like see where your dark spots are your bright areas and this allows you to kind of rotate the bulb in order to replicate your original beam pattern as best as possible so that's the other nice thing about this. And then sometimes, depending on where the wiring is at, the bulb may be in there upside down. It allows you to rotate it, obviously. Originally, the tabs are supposed to be your locating to keep the beam pattern where it's supposed to be. But uh, this, I feel, just helps you when you're installing a bulb into a halogen housing. It really allows you to kind of correct your beam pattern as best as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the driver's side done real quick and I just wanted to mention that. Also, one thing, didn't have an issue with this one. It was with this uh, low beam. When I was putting the plastic ring in, I'd get it kind of locked in, but not fully. And it would kind of, I couldn't get it to turn anymore with my fingers up in there. 
uh, I just put a small amount of WD on this O-ring and it allowed it to slide right into place. So just a quick little tip for you guys. Just a comparison of the last fit on the passenger side to the Oxalam on the driver's side before we swap out to the last fit on both sides. Let's kind of a look at it and look at it. You can kind of see this is like an off white compared to the white of the last fit switchback blinker. So let's go ahead and get these swapped out. I will also mention real quickly the quality of the O-ring on these two is a huge difference. The last fit uh, rubber O-ring just feels much, much better. So now I'm just going to take this off and I'm going to work on getting it fitted into here. Once again, I'm reaching up in, standing in front of the truck, kind of leaning forward and looking in to make sure the tabs are lined up and that helps a lot. So I have the ring in place. As you can see, all the tabs are lined up. It's rotated into position, fully locked. The headlights plugged in. Make sure before reinstalling everything to turn it on and make sure it works. I already did. So we're going to look up here, push the bulb into position. Also the wiring does tuck up inside the housing as well. There's plenty of room for it. That is it. I'll just make sure that it's nice and straight in the housing from the front and uh, then we'll be good to go. Before I put it all back together, I figured I'd show you guys, I am gonna come out at nighttime and just adjust anything that needs adjusting, but so far, much brighter. I think the color is more correct as well. My headlights were always a slightly different color from my blinkers and now they actually match, which is really nice. So once again, just make sure you make your adjustments for the height, especially if you're running a lift kit. It just got done storming, so I'm trying to get this uh, done before it starts again. But as you can see, these are the low beams and it is a much, much brighter light than it was before, especially uh, after the Oxalom started dimming. They were really bad, not just with the flickering, but with how dim they actually turned out to be. And then here are the brights. So nice beam pattern, same as before. I made sure to take before and after pictures so I know if uh, any movement needs to be done. So that's something I suggest is to just simply take a picture of your beam pattern before you do the swap and then after just to make sure that you can get the best results. And uh, overall I'm extremely happy and I'm really hoping that these perform much better than the Oxaloms. I expect them to because I've used last fit a lot. So. So that's it as far as the install of the last fit LEDs getting rid of these Oxalons. I don't know why, well I know why I went with these. I've always went with last fit and had good results, never had issues with them. Almost all of their lights I've ran uh, on five different vehicles and never had an issue in the last, I don't know, eight years or so. And uh, the reason I went with these is just because of how low profile the back housing is for that cooling fan because I was afraid that the last fits weren't going to fit in that housing and be able to have the cap on, but they do fit. And I believe that's the downside to these. Not only is the quality not quite as nice as the last fit, but the cooling fan, I just don't think is sufficient enough to cool this. So with the last fits, you do have a much larger cooling fan for them. And uh, I think that's what's going to help them perform longer than some of these cheaper lights. Sorry. It's like the middle of April and it's 36 degrees out. So it was a little chilly, but I was sick and tired of waiting. I've been driving around with my lights off. I don't really drive at nighttime too much right now, just driving for work. Um, so luckily I have other lights I can use, but yeah, the flickering, definitely a big issue. Flickering and not just like soft flickers. Sometimes it'll completely shut off and on. Now, a lot of people have questions about the auto start stop system when you come to a, a red light and your truck stops and shuts off and then when it turns back on your lights shut off and then turn back on well without having like an inline capacitor in order to keep power to the leds you're gonna have really that issue with all brands just because unlike halogens when an led headlight loses any sort of power it's it's an on-off switch. It's not like halogens where when the voltage drops, 
the light kind of dims and comes back up. If it's real quick, like the bulb isn't affected at all. When an LED with this design for headlights has that happen, they shut off and turn back on. So unless you run like an inline capacitor or find another way to keep power to the headlight, you're just gonna have that. Uh, me personally, I can't stand the start stop because it does it when I don't want it to. So 95% of the time, that's the first button I hit when I get in my truck. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys did, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. I'll have these lights linked down in the description. Keep in mind that Last Fit does have different lines of lights. So even the high beams and low beams, they have different stages. So if you wanna get one with higher performance or lower performance, you can do so. These are just the ones that I went with because it was the bundle kit. And uh, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to smash that thumbs up. And if you guys enjoyed this content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time.